Welcome to Dijobnik, your command post for clarity and perspective. Lord, the representative of Israel. Thank you, Madam President. Madam President, from the very moment that the Arabs rejected Resolution 181 in 1947, the partition plan, and began their war to destroy Israel, the Palestinians have tried to exploit the UN for their goal to reverse history. The UN and its bodies have not only failed in de-escalating the conflict or advancing a solution, the UN is directly responsible for perpetuating this conflict and ensuring that the Palestinians will continue to reject any peace plan or compromise because the political makeup here the political makeup of the UN gives them hope that they will achieve their original objective, which is, as you know, the destruction of the State of Israel. And one of the weapons that the UN has crafted to protract this conflict is UNRWA. UNRWA, the organization that so many of you fund or support, is the UN's single biggest obstacle to a solution. Colleagues, after it was founded, UNRWA was quickly hijacked by the Palestinians and weaponized into an instrument of war. UNRWA's goal is not aid or real education. In practice, UNRWA is creating a sea of Palestinian refugees, millions of them, indoctrinated to believe that Israel belongs to them. And the end goal is to use these so-called refugees and their libelous right of return, a right that doesn't exist, to flood Israel and destroy the Jewish state. It's not a secret, by the way. This has been the Palestinians' plan from day one. After their, their failed war to destroy the Jewish state in 1948, the Arabs were then left with two options. One accept the result of their actions and come to terms with Israel as the Jewish state, like the UN decided, the partition plan, a Jewish state, an Arab state. Or two, to invest every resource possible in ensuring that this conflict will not end until they get what they want, a one-state solution, not a Jewish one. Another Arab state in the Middle East. They chose a war of terror to eliminate the one and only Jewish state. UNRWA became part of their arsenal. They immediately hijacked and weaponized UNRWA and turned it into a fully Palestinian organization. I emphasize, just because UNRWA has a thin layer of Europeans in charge of collecting donations and garnering support, it doesn't change the fact that UNRWA is a Palestinian organization fully committed to the Jewish state's destruction. And how does UNRWA do this? Through their facilities, through the content in their textbooks, through their teachers and employees who support terror and glorify Hitler. One of UNRWA's primary goals is to indoctrinate Palestinian children to the idea of destroying Israel through the return, by brainwashing the Palestinians into believing that the war of 1948 is not over, that they are still refugees 76 years later, even though they were born in Gaza, Judea and Samaria, Jordan, Lebanon, Syria, and countries around the world. So I ask you, in 1949, there were approximately 500,000 Palestinians refugees. And today, according to UNRWA, there are, correct me if I'm mistaken, 5.6 million. Which, which other group of refugees, try to name a single one, has a UN body mandated not for their integration, not to end their refugehood, but to ensure that it continues generation after generation, this is exactly what UNRWA does. Colleagues, we hear a lot about Palestinian refugee camps, 
whether in Gaza, Judea and Samaria, or Lebanon. But have any of you took a moment to ask yourselves why? Why there are Palestinian refugee camps 76 years later? How can there be a Palestinian refugee camp in Gaza or next to Ramallah? These are places with no Israeli presence and complete Palestinian control. How can you be a refugee from Palestine when you live in a Palestinian city? Don't you see the paradox? Don't you see their goal for the future? If the Palestinian Authority is so keen on establishing an independent state, remember it for tomorrow, why are there still refugee camps in its territory? If a state was truly the Palestinians' goal, then these second, third, and even fourth generation descendants of refugees would be living in regular Palestinian cities and not camps. But sadly, this is not the Palestinians' goal. Their goal is still the annihilation of Israel. And one of their weapons is educating that Palestinian cities are not and will not be their permanent homes. After all, they are still, quote unquote, refugees. Their home is in Israeli cities such as Haifa, Tiberias, Tzfat, and many others. But this plot to destroy the Jewish state would be impossible without the help of UN, the UN, and its destructive agency, UNRWA. UNRWA is the world's biggest advocate for a one state solution. I repeat, UNRWA is the world's biggest advocate for a one-state solution, a Palestinian state from the river to the sea. Think about it. What makes the descendants of Palestinian refugees different from all other refugees? Why must there be a separate UN agency for Palestinian refugees, while all other refugees from Syria, from Sudan, millions from Ukraine, from Afghanistan are aided only by UNHCR. For them, it's enough. Why for Palestinians is refugehood hereditary? Think honestly about this. No other group of refugees can pass on their refugee status to their children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren in perpetuity. And no other refugee remains a refugee when they receive citizenship in another country, not the Palestinians. There are Palestinians today with Jordanian, American, and Swedish passports whose great-grandparents left Israel in 1948. Yet to this day, they remain on, remain on UNRWA's rosters as Palestinian refugee. It's absurd. By the way, do you know that Mohammed Hadid, the father of the two Supermodels, Bella and Gigi Hadid. He lives now in California. I think he's a billionaire. He is still a refugee, according to UNRWA. You can't make this stuff up. Why isn't UNRWA's primary goal is to settle the refugees? Settle them. This dysfunctional system has no parallel anywhere else in the world, and it is a fundamental part of the problem. When the UN promotes an agency that preserves refugee camps and the refugee identity nearly 80 years after the war, then all that is accomplished is the perpetuation of the conflict. What an achievement. UNRWA continues to feed the Palestinian people a lie that the world supports their demand of return, that as long as the original refugees along with their children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren, have still not returned to where they once lived before they started a war in 1948 against the resolution of the UN. They will always be excluded from society, and they will forever remain branded as refugees. In fact, in Lebanon, one example, Palestinian refugees face apartheid-like treatment. They suffer restricted access to public health, education, and so social services, and face significant restrictions on their right to work and own property. Not only is this apartheid in practice, it is UN-facilitated apartheid. 
because they live in your camps. Without the absurd hereditary refugehood fueled by UNRWA today, Palestinian refugees in Lebanon would be Lebanese citizens, not a minority discriminated against. And as more time passes, the more this problem will grow. More refugees, quote unquote, mean more services, more aid, more staff, more budget. This is not a sustainable practice. I ask you, what will you do, all of you, in 50 years if there is still no peace? UNRWA's budget will pass, how much, $3 billion? Where will you start, when will you start to think about diminishing the problem instead of keeping it alive and letting it grow. Sadly, you are providing aspirin to a body contaminated with cancerous cells. Colleagues, the UN and its bodies were established to collaborate with low abiding entities, to work hand in hand with governments, with NGOs. But what the UN is not equipped for is to collaborate with terror organizations. Hamas saw this weakness and quickly capitalized on it. Hamas was handed on a silver platter, a UN agency with an immense budget and global legitimacy. And UNRWA was totally infiltrated by Hamas. Today, in Gaza, UNRWA is Hamas and Hamas is UNRWA. And UNRWA has become an instrumental part of Gaza's, Gaza's terror war machine. Israel has shared evidence proving that 17% of UNRWA employees in Gaza are members of terror groups. And 50% of UNRWA employees have a first degree relative who is part of a terror organization. Hamas terrorists also hold key positions in UNRWA and 18 UNRWA school principals in Gaza are active Hamas terrorists, 18. Try to imagine the education that Gazan children are receiving when their principal is a genocidal jihadist. But for some of you, Hamas is not a terrorist organization, so I'm not sure I'll be able to convince you. Seeing as UNRWA has been infiltrated by terrorists at all levels, it should be no surprise that so much UNRWA aid is redirected away from civilians and to terrorists. And aside from employing terrorists, UNRWA's in infrastructure is also exploited by terrorists. A Hamas command base and de data center was recently located underneath UNRWA headquarters, and it was connected directly to UNRWA's power supply. Terror tunnels have been found underneath UNRWA facilities. The UN recognized it. And over 30 of these facilities housed weapons and terror infrastructure. Yet, rather than take responsibility for the weaponization of UNRWA, Commissioner General Lazzarini has chosen to say that he had no knowledge of Hamas's hold on his own agency. I'm sorry, this is blatantly false, false. Israel, for years, exposed terror tunnels under UNRWA schools and supplied evidence of Hamas's exploitation of UNRWA. I told it to you when we met. We implored Mr. Lazzarini and the Secretary General to carry out a comprehensive search of all UNRWA facilities three years ago in Gaza. Yet, not only did they refuse, they chose to bury their heads in the sand and ignore reality. Colleagues, the October 7th massacre was the embodiment of the Palestinian so-called right of return. That is exactly how they understand it. But it doesn't have to be this way. There are alternatives to UNRWA, among them NGOs and other UN agencies. Israel cannot and will not allow UNRWA to continue in Gaza as it did in the past. I repeat, there are alternatives to UNRWA, and it's up to you if they can succeed. Madam President, today is not 1948. Israel is not going anywhere. Israel will remain the Jewish state, and the Palestinians will, <clears throat> and the Palestinians will never be able to turn back the clock. History will not be rewritten. While I know this, and you know this, the Palestinians tragically still don't know this. And the reason they don't know it is because you continue funding UNRWA 
and fueling this deranged and perverse vision of flooding Israel with millions of descendants of Palestinian refugees. UNRWA is giving them destructive hope that Israel can be annihilated. The time has come to defund UNRWA. Thank you. I Thanks for watching. Drop a comment below. Don't forget to like, share, and hit subscribe to stay updated with our latest content. Until next time, stay informed and inspired. This is Dejobnik signing off.